Hey guys, how's it going? Me and my growler here. Uh, so yesterday I posted a video and at the end I was talking about a problem I was having with the turn signal. And so that problem actually leads into today's problem. So after that video, I came back this morning to check out the growler and move it and it was in, the starter was in this position, the run position. And so that's kind of like having the car with the keys in it and turned on um, with the radio on. So the car itself was not running, but you know, the accessories were available to be used. So same thing with this and that led to a dead battery. And so the other part of the problem is that these military vehicles have a 24 volt system and you can't just hook up a car battery with, with jumper cables to this because apparently you can fry or, or mess up the electronics of that car. So, you know, I looked up a different ways and did some research and it seems like, you know, if you have a truck that has two batteries, you can take the batteries out and you can run them in, in parallel or in, and, um, you know, kind of set it up the way this is set up so that you have a 24 volt system and then you can use that to charge. Um, but I don't have that either. So for me, I'm, I have two vehicles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take both batteries out and charge them separately with two separate vehicles. So I'm going to give that a shot and I will let you know how it goes. All right, so here we are. Um, again, this is a 24 volt system, so you wanna be careful because you don't wanna get a shock from that. Um, so the way I'm gonna do it is I'm going to first uh, disconnect the negative terminal on this battery, followed by the positive terminal on this battery, and then I will um, disconnect the negative terminal on this battery, followed by the positive terminal on this battery. Um, So, well, this one was loose, so maybe it's good that I caught this. That way it didn't just bounce off or have a loose connection while I'm driving it. Uh, so then we'll come over here, and again, you, you want to be very careful when you're doing this. So let's pull these up to give ourselves some space. See if we can just take it off by this one side so I don't have to touch anything else. There it goes. Now it would probably be best if you had some large thick you know shock resistant gloves um, but unfortunately I don't have that and I don't live in a very convenient place to just run to the store and go buy some so loosen that up a little bit all right so we have that one disconnected and then you still want to be very careful with it um, because it's still connected over here. So let's disconnect this negative, oh, I'm sorry, this positive on this side. That way our battery power will be separated from the vehicle. All right, this side's a little bit easier.
Sometimes that's all it takes a little smackaroo. this last one. We should be all right. <clears throat> See if I can pull this guy out. leave it in there for some reason it's getting stuck on this lip here so <clears throat> what we could do is just keep them separate and then we can charge them in here both batteries completely separate and isolated on their own and I'll go pull up the other vehicles. Get these off. And we'll get these off. Again, be careful to not let the wires touch each other. And we'll take them off one at a time. Let the source be as well. start getting this connected back together. So I think we'll start here with the bridge. So remember red goes to positive, black goes to negative. I'm sure you guys know that but
is likely significantly easier if you have the proper tools, like everything else in life. We just moved recently, so a lot of my tools are still at the place we used to live. Um, so this is what I got, and what I got at work. spark. I didn't see anything though. But again, just be very careful. Hopefully this will be the first and only time I have to reconnect it to make sure that the Jeep was not in the right position and it was, so this is an error on my part, so let's get this back on. See if we can get her started. All right, in position. Looks good. So it ended up taking quite a bit longer than expected uh, when I was just charging the batteries using another vehicle and I ended up having to leave uh, and I didn't want to have that going um, while I wasn't around. So what I ended up doing is I um, attached these trickle chargers. Once these batteries had enough charge in them that the trickle charger would recognize it. Uh, I just attached them and left them overnight. And, uh, these are awesome. This is a Battery Tender Junior. Um, this is not like a sponsored video or anything, but I love these things. I have probably about five or six of them for car batteries, um, boat batteries, lawnmower batteries. They're just awesome. Um, so I had these going overnight, and now we'll give it a shot and see if we can get started. I'll still connect just like I did before.
we're back in business. 